In this video, we will try to perform analysis of Rankin vapor power cycle using a steam power plant. And we have assumed over here that the steam is dry saturated at the entry to the steam turbine. Now the flow diagram is as shown over here. The various components of the steam power plant are boiler, then steam turbine, generator, condenser, hot well and feed pump. The feed pump is used to provide the feed water to the boiler. In the boiler, the sensible and latent heat is supplied and we have obtained the dry saturated steam. So in our case, we are assuming that the steam is dry saturated at the entry to the steam turbine. So that particular dry saturated steam at the boiler pressure of P1 bar is allowed to expand in the turbine and the mechanical power is generated or mechanical energy is generated. So that mechanical work is obtained over here and this rotating shaft is coupled with the generator shaft and it will convert the mechanical energy into the electrical energy. Now after the after the isentropic expansion in the steam turbine, the dry saturated steam will get converted into a wet steam and that particular wet steam is provided in the condenser. In the condenser, cooling water is supplied and that particular cooling water will absorb the latent heat from the wet steam and it will get converted to the saturated water. So this saturated water is stored in the hot well and from the hot well again it is fed back with the help of this feed pump to the boiler. So makeup water is provided to have the predetermined level in the predetermined level of the water in the boiler. So in this way this particular flow diagram of the steam power plant is J is there. Now we'll try to represent this particular on the TH diagram. So the various processes they are shown over here. So P1 is the boiler pressure and P2 is the condenser pressure. So as you can see over here 1 to 2 this is nothing but the pump work. So feed pump is provided over here to provide the feed water to the boiler. Then 2 to 3 it is the sensible heat that is supplied in the boiler and 3 to 4 it is the latent heat. In this particular case there is a change in phase from liquid to water. So this particular line it is the saturated liquid curve and this is the curve which is the saturated vapor curve. So from 3 to 4 the temperature remains constant but there is a change in phase of the working substance. So liquid saturated liquid will get converted to the saturated vapor that is nothing but the dry saturated steam in this particular case. So at point 4 the dry saturated steam will enter into the turbine and there will be an isentropic expansion from 4 to 5 in the turbine. So point 5 it lies in the wet region. So therefore at point 5 the condition of the steam is wet. So wet steam it is allowed to enter inside the condenser where the latent heat is absorbed from the wet steam by circulating this cooling water. So 5 to 1 is the heat rejected in the condenser. Now point 1 it is lying on the saturated liquid curve and therefore we have to use the values of SF and HF where SF is nothing but the specific entropy of water whereas HF is nothing but specific enthalpy of water. Then at point 4 we are having the condition of the steam as dry saturated. So we will be using the formulas of SG and HG that is specific entropy of dry saturated steam and specific enthalpy of dry saturated steam. Point 5 it lies between the liquid curve and vapor curve and that is the wet region. So we can say that at point 5 we are using the formulas for S wet and H wet where S is the specific entropy of wet steam and H is the specific enthalpy of wet steam. Now as it is the isentropic process specific entropy before expansion will remain same as the specific entropy after expansion. In other words, we can say that specific entropy of dry saturated steam is equal to specific entropy of wet steam after expansion. Now as we have already seen that 1 to 2 it is the pump work, 2 to 3 it is the sensible heat that is added in the boiler. 3 to 4 it is the latent heat added in the boiler then 4 to 5 it is the isentropic expansion and 5 to 1 is the heat rejected in the condenser in kilojoule per kg. Now first we'll calculate the dryness fraction at the exit of the turbine that is x5 
we have to calculate because 4 to 5 is the isentropic expansion process and 5 is the point which is at the exit of the turbine. So the condition that we are using is specific entropy of the dry saturated steam before expansion is equal to specific entropy of wet steam after expansion. So we can say that Hg4 is equal to S wet 5 because at point 4 the condition is dry saturated and at point 5 it is wet. Now in case of wet steam the formula that we are using is SF plus X SFG. So it is SF plus X5 into SFG. Now transfer this SF term on the left hand side so it will become negative and then divide the term by SFG so it is SG4 minus SF divided by SFG so that will get the dryness fraction at the exit of the turbine that is X5. Now these values we have to take the SG4 the 0.4 it is corresponding to boiler pressure that is P1 and 0.5 it is corresponding to the condenser pressure that is P2. So value of SG we have to take at P1 bar and SF and SFG values we have to take at the condenser pressure of P2 bar. Now the next step will be we have to find out the pump work. So the feed pump is handling the water and therefore we can say that the pump work can be expressed in terms of change in pressure multiplied by specific volume at the condenser pressure. Now this pressure it is in bar so boiler pressure minus condenser pressure that is in bar multiplied by 100 so that it will get converted to kilonewton per meter square and the specific volume is in meter cube per kg. Now if you try to balance the unit then it is kilonewton meter per kg. Newton meter is nothing but joule so it is kilojoule per kg. So we will get this particular pump work in kilojoule per kg. Also we know that 1 to 2 it is the pump work so we can also express this in terms of enthalpy. So WP is nothing but H2 minus H1. Now transfer this negative term on the on this particular side so minus h1 when it is transferred transfer on the left hand side it will become plus h1 so it is wp plus h1 that is equal to h2 now 4 to 5 it is the isentropic expansion in the steam turbine so we can say that turbine work will be given by difference between these enthalpies that is h4 minus h5 and net work will be equal to turbine work minus pump work because out of the work that is obtained in the turbine some part of it is used to drive the pump Now heat is supplied in the boiler from 2 to 4. So we can say that heat supplied is equal to H4 minus H2 expressed in kilojoule per kg and therefore the Rankine cycle efficiency will be given as output divided by input that is network divided by heat supplied multiplied by 100. So in this way we can find out the Rankine cycle efficiency in case of vapor power cycle used in a steam power plant when the steam is dry saturated at the entry to the steam turbine. Thank you very much for watching.